So first of all, thank you so much for speaking with me. I'm really pumped that I got to talk to you. I, I actually just caught the latest video for Kill to Be Heard. It was crazy the amount of punk rock legends you managed to stuff into one video. What inspired the idea for that video? Okay, well, here's what's happening with all of the off videos, mm. all of our most modern, most up-to-date videos, mm -hmm. all of the videos for the new recording. We filmed a movie, and what happened was we worked out a deal with our record label fat possum where they were going to give us a chunk of money they were going to set it set it aside so we could film x amount of videos you know promotion videos and we filmed this movie we needed more funding for our movie so we went to them and talked them into giving us the money to help us mm -hmm. finish making our movie our movie comes out at the end of the year keeping our fingers crossed that everything goes the way that it's supposed to go. Um, I'm knocking on wood for you guys because this is that's been a long time in the making, hasn't it? Thank you for knocking on wood. I'm knocking on my head, if you can hear that. <laughs> I'm knocking on the top of my head because <laughs> my head's made out of wood. We took that money and the deal that we made with the record label was we were going to provide them videos for X amount of songs and what we did was we called bits and pieces from the movie to create these videos. Oh. So now, in our brilliant move, we're not only promoting our record and our music and ourselves and our tours, but we're also promoting and advertising our movie. Damn. So how brilliant is that? We're just the smartest guys to ever walk the face of the earth. <laughs> okay. I actually think that it was a brilliant idea to do this. I, I can't help but agree. The movie making process was like a whole brand new thing to us. Mm -hmm. and, and we had days where it was a struggle. We had days where... We had a production assistant who would crack the whip and carry the gun around and make everybody, you know, hurry up and eat. We've got stuff we've got to film. We're only in this location <laughs> until the end of the day, you know, and we've got sundown coming. And so we've got to, you know, we're going to have to break out lights and lamps and get into all of that stuff. And... There were a handful of days where Dimitri being the director, one of the producers, the script writer, guitar player and off, got frustrated. And there were days where it's like, Keith, we don't have the money to film today. Wow. Can you can you help us out? And it's like, well, what do I need to do? And it's like, I got to race over to the, I'm, I'm, I don't deal with a bank. I deal with the credit union. And it's like, I've got to go over there. A lot of this stuff can't be dealt with online. It has to be dealt with in, in person. So I had to race over there and oh bump God. over some money to the film account so that everybody could get paid for that day. It was a pretty hairball experience. And we got through it. We had some extra footage. Some of that stuff is part of the movie. Some of it might, bits and pieces, might not have made it. You know, maybe they pulled it or called it off of the cutting cutting room floor. So they, they managed to, I, I, I want to say they made... Was it three or four videos for, for, for both the record and the album? There might be bits and pieces of that in these videos. I've, I've seen the movie three times. I have not seen the finished movie with all of the special effects and the, the music being placed where it needed to be placed and some of the what do they call the there there's incidental music 
which could be brought down so it doesn't get in the way of the scene or gets pushed up because the scene is really loud. You know, there's all of this going back and forth and, and certain things needing, needing to be put in their place to enhance the movie. So we went through all of that. The movie is done, and now they're dealing with movie people. Like, who's going to put it out? You know, is it going to Netflix? Is it going to Hulu? Is it the first people that talked to us were a new startup who had a have a ton of money, and they're, they're thinking they're going to get up there, and they're going to compete with all of these streaming services. So it wow. all remains to be seen. Like I said, the movie's supposed to come out at the end of the year. That's amazing. And the fact that you've got, you've already, like, you say you've seen it, but, you know, it's not the final. And, and that's a really wild thing to, to see, like, a version of it without the special effects and the, and the final music. But what do you think? Are you, are you excited to, to, to share this with the world now, finally, after all these years? Well, we're getting ready to, we, we leave this Friday to go out and promote our album. And w- what's great about this whole scenario is, is while we're promoting the album, we're also promoting the, the movie. You know, and once the movie comes out, the movie promotes our record, mm-hmm. promotes the band. So there's all of this cross-pollinization, and I, I'm excited. I'm 67 years old. I'm supposed to be sitting here, and I'm not supposed to be talking to you. I'm supposed to be talking to some kind of financial big wig, <laughs> you know, advisor saying, Keith, you should invest in this, and <laughs> how many cars do you own, and what kind of property do you own, and you want to own a couple of apartment buildings, and, you know, you want to purchase an island next to... Epstein's Island, you know, all of this kind of garbage, all this groovy garbage. I'm supposed to be talking about 401s and retirement plans, and it's like, I don't get to do that. Some of us, this is the this is the path that we have chosen, and we just continue on the path. And and that like leads perfectly into one of my, one of the big questions that I always make sure to ask when there's someone who's i mean literally like in the annals of history specifically in punk rock i mean <laughs> you've been in not one not two but three iconic bands that have formed up like so much of w- what it means to have listened to punk and to be punk but how do you mean how, like how do you do it essentially how do you maintain the same intensity and and energy and not just songwriting but in performance as well after all these years like how where does it come from? You know what? That's a that's a difficult question to to answer. I, I'm extremely and beyond fortunate to be able to be doing what I'm doing. I I could probably be be doing some other things, but I just I happen to be on a really great run right now. And I, I would be an idiot to not take advantage of what's being presented to me. You know, there's there there are a lot of guys that would kill to be in my position, and there were a, there are a lot of guys that I would kill just for them to not even be around. We we could we could get into that later on for my political aspirations. Which, of course, is just, uh, I'm just pulling your leg. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> okay. I, 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 when I was in high school, I, I had a teacher in a uh, ceramics class give us an assignment. And it, it was basically him in front of the class asking everybody to make what would, what is called a life mask. And... Everybody was afraid. Everybody was scared. Nobody, nobody did it. I was the only one in the class that stepped up, and I was the first one. He laid me down on the table, slapped some Vaseline on my lips and in my nostrils and across my eyes and eyebrows so that the clay would not stick to my face. <laughs> 
stick to you know those those parts that I just rattled off and inserted a couple of straws in my nostrils for me to be able to breathe out of. Right. I was the only one to do that. And at the end of the year, when he gave me an A in the class, he said, what I love about you is the way that you go about doing all of your assignments where you're the guy that steps up to the edge and jumps off not knowing what's on the other side. My instructor said, I really appreciate that. And that's a, that's a really great thing because if you notice the, the students, the other students in your class, your classmates, none of them stepped up to do the life mask. And how difficult was it? I said, Greg, I, I got to lay there and rest while, you know, everybody was sitting around doing whatever they were doing. <laughs> you, know, you, you gave me the opportunity to, to just relax for half an hour. <laughs> but I, I, I believe that I've always had that attitude. Like, well, here's the bar. We, we've set the bar. What are we going to do to not only reach the bar but surpass the bar? You know, what are we going to do to create another bar for ourselves? And, and, and that's one of the debates that I have with Dimitri going on right now, where it's like, what are we going to do to top what we have just done? And I said, Dimitri, we can sit around and we can talk about this. We can discuss this. But we've not finished doing everything we need to do to really have to have this debate right now mm-hmm. you know this is this is something let's wait let's wait for the movie to come out and see what happens with the movie you know the movie could just die in the water the movie could take off people could say well this is really great you have to go see it and and the music and this and that and buy the album and you know all of these things that go hand in hand we we don't know where this is going to lead us. And I, and I, I just, I, I really love being in this position of what's going to happen next. Besides this tour that we're getting ready to do, besides knowing that the record is, I mean, the, the, the record's already out, but the movie is coming out somewhere towards the end of the year. You know, it's like, let's talk about what we're going to do in the future when the time arises. As you pointed out, you're the type of person to see that, you know, abyss and just jump into it. Do you think that sort of separates some people? Well, I'm wearing a life preserver. (laughs) Fair enough. And and I've got got an oxygen tank strapped to my back, depending (laughs) upon how deep the water is. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So, you know, and I got some swim fins and a wetsuit <laughs> and <laughs> so you're fine. You're good. An emergency, you're good. An, an emergency helicopter flying overhead. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're fine. It's great. You're, you're having a, you're, you're having a blast. <laughs> I'm doing really well and oh, yeah. I'm having the time of my life. I, I have high school friends that are just a gasp about one of my friends, one of my friends who lives outside of Chicago tells me how many shows I've played this year, you know, because normally, you know, I I might say to myself, you know what, I need to go back and I need to like count all of these dates that I've played. And I don't need to do that because I have a friend that does that for me. Oh, that's a good friend. <laughs> he, he, he's a bass player. He plays country music, but he's he's come and seen one of the bands and was just like, "You're you're too old to be doing this. How can you be doing this?" You know. And then I rattle off all of the supplements I take. You know, and some of the things that I took during the lockdown, and I still take because it's stuff that you need anyways. Yeah. You know, when you reach a certain age, your your calcium starts, 
you're, you start having a calcium deficiency. I've been told not to be eating any more dairy products, but yet I'm being told that I need the calcium <laughs> and I don't drink milk and I'm not into cottage cheese or any of that stuff. So, you know, I have these daily predicaments and we, we had the lockdown and there was, I have a health food store up the street where I could go and I could get a bottle that the, the supplement that I was taking once a day contained calcium, magnesium, vitamin D3, and zinc. And the, all of those are necessary to be able to get through all of the COVID stuff. And a lot of it is stuff that's necessary in your daily life to begin with. Now, I eventually came down with COVID, and it was, for me, it was kind of brutal because it was just like a really harsh, I thought I had pneumonia. Uh. But I, had, I had gone probably about maybe a year and a half where I'd been in contact with COVID and people with COVID. And, and never contacted it. You know, so when it finally happened, it, it, was, it was a bit brutal. It lasted, for me, it lasted three weeks, you know, and oh, shit. Wow. pretty much just, it's very much an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. You know, we were like in the middle of a tour and it was just like, okay, now there are all of these dates that have to be rescheduled. Yeah. And a lot of them are sold out. We're very fortunate. This is another band. But anyways, I feel great and I get out on the road and I'll have my points where I'm dipping and I'll have my points where I'm tripping <laughs> and I'll have my points where I'm just sky high like I, this is just I've got the greatest job in the world I can't argue with that you know I I get to go to Canada and I get to go to three of the greatest cities in the world with in Vancouver and Montreal and Toronto Hell just yeah. incredibly beautiful cities you know and then we're when I say we're I mean off we're, we're going to Europe five times within the next year at the end of this run of dates we're going in we're playing Primavera we're playing two shows in Spain we're playing one show in Portugal then they added a club date in Spain, and we're playing two other club shows in France. And I, I, I don't have to pay to go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have to, you know. Sing my way through. Yeah, man. And that's one hell of a, a, a form of singing as well. I mean, like the, the, the level of, the toll that it takes on you, I'm sure, cannot be understated. Well, I don't really talk too much about the toll that it takes on me because I'm having a great time. And, I, right. and I'm normally surrounded by people that I enjoy being surrounded by. So like I said, I've got one of the greatest jobs in the world. And I am extremely lucky to be in the position that I'm in. And and speaking of being surrounded by the people that you that you love and admire, I saw you know a picture of <laughs> socials can be helpful when you actually use them to you know check in and be somewhat social. I mean. You and I don't know each other from before this, but, you know, at least I get to peer in somewhat and see what, what you've been up to. And, uh, you know, I see you with Fat Mike. And I'd actually just done an interview earlier this year about the Punk Rock Museum opening up in Las Vegas. Have you heard about that? Yes, very much so. How involved or, or not involved, how involved were you in the creation and curation of that museum? Well, they hit me up for pieces all the time. <laughs> right and on. I said, well, you're going to need to give me like half a wall. (laughs) I don't know if you've seen any of the photos of what the museum looks like, but everything has a protective, whether it be protective glass or protective plastic, but everything, it's like you can't reach out and touch anything. And 
at first it was like, well, I'm not going to let you put my Chuck Berry autograph and my ACDC Bon Scott autograph, my John Van Hammersfeld original art pieces with his, his autograph on the walls. And it, wow. it, it doesn't have anything to do with punk rock, but yet it does because some of us are at an age where we have to step up and say, I listen to punk rock. I love punk rock, but it's not the only music that I listen to. Right. I'm 67 years old. Right. You know, when did punk rock start? Maybe back in 1967 with the Seeds and the Standells, Love, Little yeah. Red Book. To me, that would be the, the first wave of punk rock, and it would be kind of difficult to explain this to some kid who doesn't know anything more than no effects and Pennywise and Rancid. Yeah. You know, that, that, that don't know that there were, that, that the teenagers have always been in revolt against society, against the man, against the politicians, against the police chief, mm. against the, the principal at their high school. The kids have always been in revolt. And that's just the way that it is. But the, they've also asked me to be a curator. And they, they asked us very early on, and I was at a point where, well, I need to know more about this museum. Mm. You know, I'm not just, I'm not just volunteering my services and going in there and seeing that it's just, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be put up. There's a lot of stuff that's missing. Mm. And when I do go back to them or they reach out to me, I, I, I want to say, when the off movie comes out, I will be more than happy to curate and walk around and point out certain things and explain certain things and tell stories. If they'll set up a section where they will show the movie, where they will show free LSD. That seems like a win-win. <laughs> that seems like an absolute win-win. Well, we just we just need to see how it plays out. Yeah, yeah. My God, that'd be a great collab. Yeah, and you giving a guided tour. I mean, shit. Like, I see the the people that have agreed to it, and I see how committed they are. And I was wondering if they had reached out, and clearly they have them. So I'm I'm really pumped about what the future holds on on that end. Well, they have a roster of tour guide people because that's pretty much what that is i mean of course there are probably some larger adjectives to describe the person that you know directs the crowd through the museum but also you just brought up the word iconic and i have all of these pieces that pertain to a couple of periods of time in music and i i have a couple of Raymond Pettibone pieces that I would display. And then they said, you don't have to worry because everything's insured. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but if you have a piece that's stolen, how are you going to replace it? How are you going to, how are you going to replace an original Raymond Pettibone piece? You're not, but are you going to hand me a check for whatever amount you think that the piece is worth? Anyways, I hear you on um, that one, though. Now, where, where where are we playing in Toronto? That's a good question. So I actually hadn't brought up the Toronto date yet. I can bring that up right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll look for it while we're chatting away here. Oh, that was that was literally <laughs> thought I would. Yeah, playing on the sixteenth at Lee's Palace. Oh hell yeah! I played. I have played Lee's Palace, I want to say, at least three times. Wow. And, oh, and, and I like it. I, I, I love the neighborhood. It, it's been a few years since I've been there. You know, the, the neighborhood could 
could have been gentrified by now, yeah. keeping my fingers crossed that it hasn't. But, you know, it all remains to be seen. See, one of the things I love to do is we normally get there. We, we're we we're loading in around three. We're going to be doing a sound check probably by around four. And in the process, I need to get something to eat. And I need, I need to, because I'm the vocalist, I don't need to tune up my guitar. I don't need to tune up my drum kit. Mm. You know, I have nothing to set up except putting my microphone on a mic stand. So I like getting out of the van and depending upon the venue, if there are people at the venue who are going to help us move equipment, just getting out of the way, you know, maybe carrying a guitar in or carrying, <laughs> carrying in like a, a cymbal case. But I, I'm, I don't really, most of the time, I don't have to move anything because there are people at these venues who get paid to help the band move their equipment. So it's like, rather than get in the way, I'll get out of the way and go for a walk and maybe find a bookstore or find a record store or find a place to get something to eat. And you could do worse than that neighborhood. Holy cow. I actually, it's funny that you mentioned Lee's Palace because of all the places that I lived and worked, that was one of them few venues where I actually worked like basically just down the street from it. And, you know, spoiler alert, it, it has had quite a lot of changes in that neighborhood. The biggest one being, this actually, I, I got emotional when I heard about this, but uh, Honest Ed's, it closed, it closed down and they are, it's... I'll give you three guesses as to what they've turned it into. but I don't know what they turned it into, but the deal is we went through a two-year lockdown. Yeah. And a lot of businesses, they closed down. They folded because they couldn't survive during mm. the two-year lockdown. Now, I don't know what kind of a lockdown you had up in Canada, but I'm pretty sure it was right along the lines as what we had here. And I noticed... Like a great restaurant could survive just because of delivery service. Right. Now, a lot of restaurants didn't survive because maybe their food was not, not very good or maybe their service was terrible. But for the most part, it was, it was mostly restaurant. And my favorite restaurant in my neighborhood she had no choice but to close down because I would go in there on a Friday night when there should be at least a couple of dozen people in there, mm. and there'd be like five or six people in there. And the food was amazing. And because the neighborhood had been gentrified, the newer people moving in wanted some kind of fusion. They wanted... Korean Mexican tacos with kimchi and you fuck? know stuff like that <laughs> and a lot of that stuff's wonderful but great food is a, a lot of times difficult to come by true very true well I, I on the bright side at least in in that neighborhood you are going to be in your element I think for between the sushi and shawarma, my God, I can't. Yeah, Bloor Street is unreal. You couldn't do much better than that neighborhood. Let's let's pivot from good food. I wanted to ask: Is it weird at all to think of punk in terms of like? I mean, you think of historical impact, wider cultural influence, but is it weird to also figure yourself into that realm? Like, it, it's got to be strange to look back and you look on the history of events, and you see yourself in that. What must that feel like is, is a question I've always wondered. You know, I don't really dwell upon these things. What, what's the social impact? What's the political impact? Where we stand amongst all of these other bands? I, I never really consider that. I'm just... I'm, I'm just kind of living in the moment. And, you know, in the beginning when we were doing what we were doing, like in Black Flag, we didn't think about any of this stuff. We 
we're just excited to get in a room and make a bunch of noise. And we we didn't stand around conversing and talking to each other like, well, what are going to be the ramifications and what does all of this mean? And we, we never we never cared about any of that. We just wanted to play. You know, we would play wherever we could play. And it wasn't about survival because we were all working day jobs. And to all of the aspiring musicians out there, don't give up your day jobs. We just... We never considered any of this stuff. We never thought, well, hey, we're creating a musical movement that nobody has ever seen or heard before. You know, and we were, but we didn't realize it because we were like in the now. It's like, this is what's happening right now. It's not like what's going to be happening 20 years from now. What's going to be happening 10 years from now. What's going to be happening next week? Oh, well, we have a show at the Starwood or we're, we're, we're going to be playing a party in a basement over in Inglewood under the flight path to Los Angeles International Airport. You know, we did not think about stuff like that. And even to this day, it's like, well, yeah, I'm proud of what, what we did and what we've done and what we're doing and i just leave it at that i i i I don't dwell upon these historical where do you fit in amongst the doobie brothers and motorhead and tiny and the fucking nose hair pliers and you know any of that stuff we we don't Hmm. worry about any of it and i personally like I said, don't dwell upon it. Yeah, no, you're, that's a good way of putting it. I, that actually, it makes a lot more sense to me. Well, then how about this then? I, I think there's a more pertinent question actually then. Would you say you have more or less reason to be playing punk now given the social and political landscape today? It's a bit of a loaded question, but I don't know. How do you feel about it, where it comes from, that motivation now? Well, I would say that the motivational factor is if you look at the times that we're living in right now, our politicians are as bad, if not worse, than they've ever been. Our U.S. political structure, some of the worst people in the history of the world, you know, all of the greed, all of everybody on the take, all of the bombing and all of the military industrial complex, all of the money that's being spent on that, our health care system, fucking horrible, you know, and, and we, everybody should be even more angry than they are. And that's my fuel mm. that runs. That's the fuel in my gas tank. The subject material on, on three LSD, all of the subject matter, all based on conspiracy theories, always circle back to our CIA. And that's a really interesting point because I wanted to ask if you can even just touch on what the film's about. But now you've given me, now you've really got me curious with a with a statement like that. I mean, yeah, I've I've. <laughs> I've definitely done my fair share of learning about, you know, 20th century American, you know, Cold War politics. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But is there something, I mean, well, I guess it's in the name, <laughs> Free LSD. But Well, one of the things that in, in doing all of the research, one of the things that happened, and now here, here, here's another really really great point and that is your government's not really much more different than our government correct and you have a lot of the same things happening to your people that are happening to us i think the only thing that divides us is just the border we had a political situation where one of the one of our most important people 
was murdered because he was getting ready to give the pink slip to the Central Intelligence Agency, and they couldn't have that. And he was also in negotiations with the Soviet Union, trying to put a stop to the nuclear arms race. Two really, two really great situations. <laughs> and I don't mean the, the arms race being great, but trying to put an end to the arms race. You know, like we've already proven what we're capable of doing because we dropped two bombs in Japan. And, and we've already got enough bombs to, like, just destroy the earth. And this was, this was back in the early 60s. But huh. we discovered in our doing our research on all of these conspiracies, these conspiracy theories, we, we went deep. This isn't, you know, normally you have these talking heads that are going to tell you about these conspiracies and they they google it and go into the first thing that pops up the first subject the first line second line maybe they might go two or three deep but they're they're not going down to line number 18 they're not going down to line 25 and we did a lot of that. We did a we did an incredible amount of research. If you had to point to one resource, maybe not resource, one publication, you know, I I I know what I would point to for certain subjects, but for what we're talking about here, which is the hidden history, the secret history of the American I don't know, a complex of of everything, the political structure, the military structure. What could you point to to start someone on that path to learning a bit more about what really lies behind the curtain, so to speak? I can't come up with any names right now. I, I have... See, and this would be kind of unfair because... It would be great to get the other side's take on it, but I'm, I lean to the left, <laughs> you know, and we watched all of these talking heads on television just fucking lie to us or bend the truth or, you know, make things up or create different scenarios. Regularly. And they, I, I, I maybe I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Maybe I I should spend a little bit more time listening to some of these people that we shouldn't even really be wasting our time listening to in the first place. But, you know, just to be fair, you know, just to keep things even, just to, like, be able to know what both sides are talking about, I have probably four or five different news sources, you know, whether it be the LA Times or the New York Times. I I have several other sources, and I I don't really want to recommend any of them to anybody because we should all be able to, like, read what's there and hopefully be able to de- determine if they're, you know, left-leaning, right-leaning, centrist. All I would say is we, at one time, uh, 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 us Americans, not, well, North Americans, South Americans, just Americans, we had a guy on television, his name was Walter Cronkite, and he just said what he said, and he didn't lean in any direction. He just told it as it is. Right. And that would be great if we if we had more, you know, newscasters and news people and people in positions to let everybody know what's going on. If, if we had more people like him. Man, 
Yeah, stop having the, like, clearly enough of the editorial and the opinion pieces. And, yeah, I can't help but think and dream of something like that, too. I wanted to, first of all, thank you, because I definitely went over time with you. <laughs> but also, it's not every day I get to speak with someone who had a very real hand <laughs> in my, in my, in my sonic world as it, as it is as it was so i just have to say thank you and i'm really 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 looking forward to seeing what this film is how this film's going to play out and i really do hope to catch you guys when you're here and yeah i'm really looking forward to what's coming next keith well thanks for your time and yours